I'm going to do a little bit of background first, um, because 2009 feels so long ago that um, many of us will need a little bit of reminder. But back in July of 2009, regional centers were told they could no longer purchase um, social recreation activities. We were told we could not purchase camping services, our social recreation, except those that were within maybe a day program. And we were also told that we were no longer allowed to buy non-medical therapies, recreation, art, dance, music, horseback riding, those types of um, services. And so since 2009, regional centers have been advocating with the legislature and with the Department of Developmental Services advocating for allowing us to purchase these services again, because we've heard from our families that they're very important. And so in, in this current fiscal year, uh, changes to the law have been made and have restored our authority to fund those services. So we are now allowed once again to purchase social recreation activities, camp services, and the non-medical therapies that I mentioned um, recreation, art, dance, music, um, and even again, uh, equestrian. And so it's intended that these restored services will be part of the IPP planning process. And so again, this is an opportunity for all families, if this is something they're interested in, to discuss with their service coordinator at their IPP planning meeting. And so uh, on this slide, I have what's called WNI code. That's Welfare and Institutions Code. Section 4646A. This is the area that describes the plan IPP planning process. We have to make sure that the IPP is centered on the individual and the family. We take into account the needs and preferences of the individual and the family. Um, we are obligated to promote community integration, independent, productive, and normal lives. What that means as it relates to recreation is that we are going to be looking to see about inclusion in the community as opposed to segregated and isolated um, services. Uh, the IPP should reflect preferences and choices of the uh, client or the family member. And of course, we always are looking to make sure that we are using a cost effective use of the um, public resources that we're given. Continuing on with talking about um, the Welfare and Institution Code section 4646. Restoration of these suspended services does not eliminate other responsibilities when developing the IPP. So when the regional center develops the IPP with the family, we are still obligated to use generic services and supports when those are appropriate, to look at other possible sources of funding if they exist, for a particular um, individual. And also in some instances, consider ration of the family's responsibility for providing similar services for a minor child without a disability. So these are still items that will be part of the discussion at the IPP planning meeting as they would be for any resource that we might discuss for a particular family. So uh, looking at um, Lanterman Regional Center's um, service standards specifically for children. Um, again, working from the, um, the Lanterman Act, the Welfare and Institutions Code, families are expected to provide their child with a disability with the same social and recreational opportunity that they would provide for a child without a disability. And I always talk about um, uh, some of the, the very common, if you will, uh, generic or community resources. Uh, maybe the registration for playing a sport, whether it be soccer or um, softball or baseball, something along that line. Um, that, that is very typical that families, especially of school age children, might assume some of those ordinary costs, whereas someone gets older and certainly when they're a young adult, maybe in fact, families would not normally do that because it's typically not something um, families might do for an adult. Next slide, Evie. Thinking. So for children, we may assist financially uh, as an exception if it would cause an undue financial hardship. So we do not want families not to ask. Okay, even though we do say that there may be a parental responsibility, we still want families to ask because if you need assistance with that, that's something that we want to have a conversation about. The regional center 
um, may determine that participation in socialization or leisure or rec activity may also be a source of uh, families' need for respite. Um, the example that I would give for that is that during the pandemic in particular, we have increased respite because families have lost maybe their other options that were available to them before the pandemic. And so it would be an opportunity um, to look and see if we're able to go back to what was more typical for a particular family. I wanna emphasize though, that it is not expected that families have to relinquish or give up their respite in order to take advantage of social recreation. It is absolutely possible to have both services. Evie, yeah. For adults that are living in a family home, uh, again, we may assist financially uh, for families who this would be an undue hardship for them to pay for social rec or um, other type of service. And we would, again, just like with children, we would review the purchase of both respite and the social leisure recreation and make adjustments possibly. But those adjustments would have to be agreed to by the family and by the adult. And for adults who live independently, this would be someone who's living in an apartment. Um, they may be expected to contribute using some of their own funds. Uh, but again, we will assess financially if this would cause undue hardship to that particular uh, individual. In all cases, regardless of where the person lives, if the individual served needs extra support to engage in inclusive social or recreation activities, the regional center may provide that support. That support might include training of staff at a particular program that offers social or recreation activity. We have a provider who's able to go into um, uh, community centers um, and provide training to their staff on how best to support someone with a developmental disability. We also have the ability to pay for additional support. If someone needs a one-on-one -on -one to participate in an activity, uh, that is something that the regional center uh, could consider doing. Uh, and sometimes it's a companion for the individual. Again, through the, through the um, whether it be a camp um, or some other type of activity, uh, whether that be a natural support or again, through a vendored uh, regional center service. So when you're requesting uh, social recreation services, we have some suggestions for you. Um, again, it should be discussed as part of the IPP planning process and it's implemented to meet the needs of the individual served. And so start by talking with your service coordinator about your current circumstances. Uh, discuss how the requested services will meet either your adult or your child's individual needs. Um, does the service help achieve a desired outcome in the IPP? We may discuss other services currently being funded to support the adult or your child. And we may discuss how the requested service increases participation in community. We're hoping for um, back in 2009, when we were, we were able to do these services, we found that a lot of our families were taking advantage of activities in their home community. They were participating in park and recreation activities, the boys or girls club, scouts, um, local sporting events, art classes, and um, having an opportunity to be an active member of the community, uh, being included with typical peers, working on developing friendships. And that is ultimately, I think the desire now is to try to reconnect um, our families with their home community now that we're allowed to do this. And so we have um, this link that's on the, on the uh, screen. We have begun a um, resource list that is posted on the website. Um, if you go to um, the website, uh, thelanderman.org, um, and you go under information and resources, I believe it's called, there's a list, alphabetical. So if you, if you look under S for social recreation, you will find um, a link specifically for social recreation activities. Uh, right now, the link is up in English and in Spanish, and we are in the process of, record, of uh, translating uh, for Korean as well, so that it will be up uh, in Korean. And it is not a um, exhaustive list. I'm sure that as, as families connect and learn about other resources, we, we hope they'll be sharing them with us as well, so we can add them and update our list 
We think that that will help people um, not have to hunt too much, um, but to be able to, to know from each other maybe where you've been successful. Uh, but right now you'll see some of the local city park and recs, the YMCA, some scout programs, uh, and we are open for other uh, suggestions as well. And, oh my, I went through that fast. I'm sure that there are lots of questions. And so Evie, maybe we can put the, um, the uh, PowerPoint down and um, I'm gonna rely on Evie to kind of uh, direct um, questions because I see that we have about, it looks like almost 60 people, uh, but I'm glad to take individual questions or if there's something that I said that was not clear, I'm glad to try to, um, to clarify. The only question in the chat is that, are we going to share this PowerPoint with the participant? Um, you know what, we can put it up on that, on the, um, I don't know how you normally do that, Evie. I'm glad to share it. So whether or not it's easiest to send it to the people who've registered or whether or not we should just put it on the social rec website, I'm glad to do both, really. I just don't know um, the technology that you've used in the past. I'll share with the, the ones who registered. Okay, in thank PDF. you. In PDF, and then we'll work on getting it also posted on the website. Yes. Good, good idea, whoever made that question. Any other questions? How, how is this different from SDP? Or did you want to translate that question, Sarah? Did you want to switch over to English? And So I see a text. Can you give us examples of social rec services that can possibly be authorized? Was there one before that, Evie, or can I answer that one? You could answer that. Okay. So um, I'm going to give examples of, of things that we've authorized in the past. Uh, again, we, uh, and especially with it almost being springtime again, it was not uncommon for um, the regional center to authorize day camp during the spring break from school, for example. So schools would go on um, spring break for usually a week, sometimes two weeks, and there might be day camps for someone to go to during um, that week. And we might authorize and pay for the registration to, again, a local park and recreation, uh, whether it be Los Angeles or whether it be Glendale or Burbank, we would pay the registration fee for that individual. For other families, they may have paid for the registration fee because um, that was something they would do for their other children of, this, of comparable aging. But what they needed from us was the support. The day camp needed some extra staff, some extra pair of hands. And so we would authorize and pay for the one-on-one, -on -one, if you will, um, to help that individual go to that day camp. Um, we have paid for um, lessons, uh, maybe uh, art lessons or music lessons. I can remember in the past where people might have horseback riding. Um, so those are some of the examples that we have done. We have done in the past. I see a hand up, Evie. Um, actually, let's go through the, the oh, ones okay. in the chat first. Sure. So the first question was, how is it different from SDP? So what you presented today, is it only the non-SDP families or is it the same process for the SDP families? Well, it would be the same process in the sense that that any changes to services go through the IPP process, the IPP discussion. Um, but this, um, the change in the law allowing the regional centers to fund um, probably has more impact on those people not in SDP because you don't have this, you haven't had that same flexibility where someone in SDP may have within their spending plan figured out how they were going to meet their son or daughter's needs. Um, but I would say, you know, in the, in the global picture, um, social recreation is open to all individuals, regardless of what type of um, program they may be in, traditional regional center or um, SDP. And can you give some examples for school age, school age kids, how to utilize this? Well, I think day camp is probably the most common one again, 
for um, school age kids. I would say, um, in my memory, I can remember karate classes, uh, other type of, um, again, pain registration for AYSO soccer or little league um, sports where maybe families um, wanted their family member to participate and maybe it was a financial burden for them to be able to pay that registration themselves. Um, I think that um, I recall that for some of these classes, again, I'm gonna use karate as the example. Also, I think gymnastics. Oftentimes families would explain to us that going to a class, having to follow the routine um, of, you know, wearing the proper uniform, following the instructions of the lesson, being in a class with typical developing peers, that these were ways where a child with a developmental disability learn to follow routine, follow instructions, uh, began to develop friendships, maybe uh, learn from peers, typical developing peers, and develop naturally some of those social skills that we, we, we want everyone to have. So um, those are some of the examples. I think it's really about what is of interest to the child. I, I wouldn't want someone to leave today's discussion thinking something isn't done because I forgot to mention it. Someone's recreation, leisure activity might be music, might be music lessons. Someone else's might be art. Someone else's might be sports. Um, and so it really is about the interest level for that particular child and supported by that family. Okay, another question. Um, you mentioned something about considering both respite and social rec. How are they connected? Well, in some instances, um, again, back way back in 2009, when we had to stop doing this, for some families who lost their social rec opportunity, it left a gap. And so the only option we had at the time was to fill the gap with respite. For those particular families, we'll have the conversation again. Do they want it to stay respite? Do they want to talk about something else? And let's create a plan that works for that particular person who now probably is a young adult um, in that family. Um, for people during uh, the pandemic, we've had, you know, people when the pandemic started, people had respite. And then on top of that, we added additional respite called the SOE respite, state of emergency respite. Okay, state of California is beginning to say state of emergency is beginning to fade, beginning to go away. Well, if we're in a position where that fades, maybe recreation can fill some of that gap. So it is not the intent to take away respite. It is trying to be responsive as things uh, move. And how they move for one family might be different than how they move to another family. Thank you. There's another question in the chat. Um, it says, hi, Melinda. Would there be a list of vendors or types of non-medical therapies, art, dance, and et cetera? Not okay. sure where to look for them. Okay, so that's what we're working on. So um, again, right now on our website, uh, you really you have two options. First of all, you could go to the network of care on the website and you can type in music lessons or you could type in swimming or horseback riding and you can see what would generate from the network of care, which is the automatic uh, directory. Can Another I share? Oh, you sure. It'll be helpful to show them. Yeah. So if you ever visit our website, this is what it looks like. If you click on this little flower, it's gonna direct you to the network of care. It's a very, very resourceful, helpful website. So if you want to type in social skills here, your zip code here, search for it. It gives you the list of them. This still gives you some categories you have to drill a little bit. Yeah. 
So social skills was too broad, I guess. Too broad. Try to back <laughs> riding or swimming. One of those. Yeah, maybe swim. Hmm. Okay, so so then you go down to swimming lessons, and this shows you uh, on the map. You see some in Koreatown. You see some in downtown LA, uh, Hollywood. And so then depending on where you live, you could go down and look and see if there's something that's of interest to you. So that's one option using the network of care. Um, and then, oh, Evie, I was gonna oh, have you show the I'm, other thing. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, let's go back to the website. Mm -hmm. And if you go to info, info and resources, and then far to the right under self-determination, it says social rec camp and services, scroll down there, click on that. And then scroll down a little bit. And this is where I was saying at the beginning, right now it's just up in English and in Spanish, and we're working on it to be in Korean, okay? Um, and so if you clicked on one of those, so let's click on the English ones. Click here to view a list of resources. And this is a very much a beginning list. So you can see city programs. It says Park and it says Burbank Park and Rec, City LA Park and Rec, Glendale. So we're going through our larger communities. It has sports and recreation and fitness. Um, and then it has social programs and camps. And so this is the list that will grow over time. And um, this is where families could be really helpful to us because if you learn of something and you share it with us, we could add it to the list, okay? And you can see on many of these, we have the link um, so that if you were like, if we stop right there for a second, Evie, see Danny's farm about halfway down, mm -hmm. pointing at the screen like you can see my finger. Um, if you click <laughs> on that link, Danny's farm, it would then take you to that website and you could look and see what Danny's farm has to offer to see if in fact your family member is really into animals. This might be a resource that you would be interested in. So that's just an example. Okay. So this again, there are two ways on the website where you could begin to look for resources. One is the network of care and one is this um, list that's um, in process and will continue to change, I imagine, as people share with us uh, resources that they think are good. Thank you, Evie. Thank you. And someone just um, put the links on the chat. So maybe you could click that and try it. Okay. And I'll go to Yvonne Yu. Can you unmute and maybe you could come back you. Okay, is there another question in the chat? Yes. Are we only talking about the group activities or could it be one-to-one -one support? Well, um, a one-to-one -one support to, to do a leisure activity or to one-to-one -one support in a group activity? In a group activity. Well, uh, I, I think I covered that, that that is also a possibility, yes. So if, if somebody wants to participate um, in a group activity, um, especially again, um, day camp seems to be a common one where the day camp may be willing to include a young child with a developmental disability in their day camp, but they may not have enough staff to give the type of attention that a young child with a developmental dis disability might need. And so then we would fund the one-to-one. -one. Okay, so I, the, I'm gonna take a drink. I see the question. Yeah, uh, um, another question sent to me directly. So if they were talking to their service coordinator and it was considered appropriate support, could it be um, an activity where they ask for the monthly pay or is it only um, the like one-time service like camping? Um, I think it could be either. I don't think it's limited to one-time services. Um, again, 
I'll, I'll use the example of some type of um, lesson, karate lesson, gymnastic lesson. Those usually, um, uh, I'm trying to remember when my kids were that young, uh, but you would buy them like three months at a time or maybe six months at a time and you would buy a group of lessons. So I, I certainly don't mean to give you the, the impression that it's a one-time thing. Um, I think there are times when um, what works for one family or what's important for one family may not be as important for someone else. So the intent is be having the conversation at your IPP meeting and trying to figure out what it is that you think would be most appropriate for your family member. Okay, and um, then how that fits in. And another question about the provider, if they find a provider that is not vendored with the regional center, how will regional center fund for that program? Um, I think we will, um, we will try to use what's called participant directed services. This is a way where um, the family would have to um, work with what's called an FMS, a financial management service. And so the family would have to pay up front, give the receipt to the FMS, and the FMS would then reimburse you for the cost. All of that needs to be approved before you do it. So please don't, don't spend money until you know it's in your IPP. And for the participant, who's not in the STP, who's only going through the traditional service, um, is a respite, respite service hours converted to the social rec? Not necessarily, no. You can have both respite and social rec, okay? Um, and I, I know it can sound uh, like I'm kind of confusing it. It really depends again on your family situation. If you get what I would call a modest amount of respite, 30 or 40 hours a month of respite, you, there would be no reason to think we need to talk about exchanging some respite for social rec. The reverse, if you are in a situation where you need, I'm making this up now guys, so please work with me here, um, a couple hundred hours of respite, we would look at a schedule, at a calendar and say, well, where is the class going to be if in fact you're already getting respite? And so then there might be the need to look a little bit and, and make some adjustment. But you absolutely, I would expect that most families who want recreation would still continue to receive respite. It's a combination of these services. Remember, besides social rec, besides respite, Many families also have a child or a young adult in school or day program. They may also be getting ABA services. They may also be getting something else. You look at the whole package. Another question here. If, um, if there's a summer camp service that the, the client could benefit from, but he needs one-to-one -one aid, one-to-one -one aid to participate because he's having trouble with you know, groups, then can regional center support both or just one of them? The regional center could support both. We would be looking to see about, again, parental responsibility as far as funding typical recreation for a, a typically aged child. What I mean by that is if, the child were say, you know, young, five, six, seven, eight years old, we would ask if you're able to afford the registration fee and we pay the one-to-one. -one. If you're not able to, and you can show that it would be a financial hardship, then we would do both. If you were able to pay the registration, we would ask you to, and now it's still your, um, your comfort level, I guess, to say, yes, I agree to do that or no. And then the regional center will have to figure out what they're gonna do if you say no. Um, if you're now talking about an 18 year old son or daughter who lives with you, it's very uncommon that a parent would pay for day camp 
for an 18 year old. So then that really would be more a regional center responsibility. So some of the answers here are gonna change for you on the screen, depending on your circumstances, depending on the age of your family member, depending on the resource and your, um, the, uh, I guess I'll call it uh, the IPP plan you have developed for your family member. And if there's a client who needs help in a group study, who, who has difficulty focusing, and if they were to request 128 for the group study, is that considered a social rec? I don't know what is meant by group study. Um, it's a group studying group with peers. Well, I'm not sure that I would consider group study a social rec activity. That doesn't mean that we wouldn't still want to have a conversation about what the need is and to see how we might be able to support. But if we're talking about tutoring or studying for academics, I don't see that as social recreation. So social recreation is leisure. It is, um, it is play. It is, again, creative art lessons. It's um, horseback riding, gymnastics, karate, Boy Scouts, Girl Scouts. I think those are more traditionally seen as social rec. And the list that we went over, uh, on the website, uh -huh. is that only for Lantham and Regional Center? Um, I think that those resources, they're focused for Lanterman. Like if you look at the cities, we're looking at our catchment area, but I don't think there's a, um, a limit. Uh, you know, somebody, uh, somebody who lives outside of Burbank could probably still enroll and go to a Burbank park and recreation activity, but that would be really the park and recreation's decision, not the regional centers. So it depends on the provider, it's up to them. I think so, yes. yeah, it's up to them. So, I mean, when, when we've worked on our list, that, that list you saw, we looked at things that were in our geographic area um, because we're trying to provide resources for the people who live in our area. And somebody asked about tutoring. I think you answered that question. And um, for example, this person's um, asking about the example. So if someone were to request personal one-to-one -one piano lessons, would that consider a social rec? Um, I, I think that it could. I think that's something you discuss at your, at your IPP. It's where does that individual piano lesson turn into an IPP um, objective. So I think it, it has absolute potential for that. And last question in the chat, if nobody else has a question. Um, it's about the vendors who's not registered at, for the regional center. I think you went over that, right? Well, we go if, through FMS. If, if they're not vendored at all, we would go through the FMS. If they happen to be vendored by a different regional center and they're just new to us, we can get the vendor information from the other regional center and then we could pay directly. Is Yvonne, no you, you back by any chance? Cause I see her hand is still up. I know. Hi Yvonne, I'm asking to unmute. 마이크 켜고 질문해 주실 수 있을까요? I think she's struggling to unmute. Okay. 다른 질문 있으신 분 계실까요? Anybody else has any questions? Oh, we have one more in the chat. Can my kid get only one service even though he needs multiple recreational services? I'd say that's an IPP discussion. There is nothing in the Lanterman Act or in Lanterman Regional Center Service Standard that says it's a maximum of one or two. Um, I do think that it's a discussion of what else is happening with that particular IPP plan for that particular person. So um, I think families need to ask. Is there a way to get one to one aid who has ABA background? 
because most one-to-one -one aides are from agencies that do not have any experience regard related to ABA. Um, I think yeah, you're beginning to venture outside of the scope <laughs> of this particular presentation. I would tell you it depends, first of all, your source of ABA. If you're already receiving ABA and you already have it maybe say funded through your health plan or through something, the question would be whether or not they could also go to the, um, the social rec activity. Um, and so that might warrant some more creative discussion between the ABA provider, whoever is doing the work with your family member and where you want to have the social rec. Um, I think that if what the question is about, do we have one-to-ones who are trained with ABA? I would tell you it's probably highly unlikely. If we have one-to-ones who um, are trained in ABA, they're probably working for ABA providers and not our one-to-one -one services would be my guess. Especially quite honestly, in this time of, again, of the pandemic, where just finding um, people willing to work has been a challenge. I wonder if we can get Yvonne to type her question in. I just feel bad that we're ignoring her. 어머님, 저 마이크 켜고 질문해 주실 수 있을까요? 이반 어머님? 아니면 채팅창에 쓰셔도 되는데요. So I think this person is asking about the process. Do the parents have to first find a vendor or provider and request a service to the service coordinator and parent is getting reimbursement? Or is Lantimer Regional Center getting the process, or is it the parents who needs to find it and pay and reimburse? I think it depends on what the service is. Uh, okay, you, you have to start at the IPP process and voice what it is you're looking for. Once we know what you're looking for, we're able to say one of two things. Either yes, we have it, or that's a new idea to us and we're unaware and we need to do this together or we need to find it. Um, if it's, for example, if it were swimming lessons, um, during this whole, God, I can't do the math, um, 11 or 12 years that there's been no availability of doing social rec, some swimming schools have continued to provide swimming for people with developmental disabilities. The most common one in our area is the Rose Bowl Aquatics over in Pasadena. So we, we know about them very well. So if you were to ask about swimming, we could easily say there's the Rose Bowl and there is one or two others that I can think of off the top of my head. But if you were to say, um, uh, yoga or meditation, this would be something that I would, venture to guess, I'm pretty sure the regional center doesn't know much about. So we would have to do research or we would need to rely on families to say, I found somebody and I already know who I want to use, okay? And if, if you know who you want to use, then it's a discussion about going through the FMS. So each one of these, when, when, when you know families ask which way, it really is going to be driven by um, the service that you're looking for. Uh, these, uh, again, 10 or 11 years where there have been no recreation op opportunities, the vendors that used to do this, some of them went out of business. So we're now knocking on their door and asking them if they're willing to come back. Okay, so this is going to take a little bit of time. Um, for them to, uh, if they're willing, uh, to come back and be ready to provide the service. So it's not as black and white as uh, many of us would like it to be. Um, it really is going to be driven by uh, us reconnecting with vendors, families sharing the resources that they're familiar with, that they're using, um, and some will be vendored and some will not, and we'll have to use FMS. Thank you. For the recreational services, are parents um, participating with the ch children? I'm sorry, you say it again? For social rec services, 
Uh -huh. Do the parents need to participate with them? I think that's up to the vendor. I don't think that's our, our decision. I think that um, some probably are used to parents taking their child to the activity, leaving them, and then coming back to pick them up. Others maybe expect parent participation. That really is the, um, the resource decision and not the regional center decision. For the clients who's already in SDP, because of this change, are they, are they gonna get any budget adjustment for social rec? You know what, I have, that, I have a call in to the Department of Developmental Services on that very question. I don't know the answer to that. I, I've asked myself that same question. We will, uh, once we get an answer, we'll be sharing it with our, our families. So this change only applies to those who's requesting social rec services from now on, or, or are we going to reimburse for the activities that, that they have been doing on their own? It's from this point going forward, because again, we were not allowed to do from 2009 up until um, uh, you know the end of last year. And so we can't reimburse for something when we weren't allowed to do it. And but if you're doing something now, I would tell you, you need to call your service coordinator. You need to have that IPP and, and um, you know, let us move forward. Yes. And is, the, is this change for all over California or our region only? California. This was, this was a decision and a change that was made by the legislature. Okay, so the legislature voted to make this change in the Lanterman Act. And we're responding to the change they made. Thank you. And Yvonne, you, we only have you. We don't have any other chat. Okay. Anybody else have any other questions? Well, then I'm going to thank you all for your time. I really do appreciate it. And as you think of new questions, um, I'm sure, you, you know, if you shoot them uh, to the help desk or to Evie directly, um, she'll get them to me and we'll try to get you some answers. I just really encourage you all speak with your service coordinator. Um, talk about social rec as it applies to your particular family member. And um, Again, we'll go from there. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you all. I really appreciate it. Have a good day. Stay safe and well.